Hi, I'm Kevin McSherry. I'm an artist and teacher working out of my studio in Dublin. I do virtual online art classes uh, and you can access those through mcsherrystudio.com. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook at uh, McSherry Studio Art Classes and you'd be most welcome to join me. Uh, all the classes are aimed at beginners. I do a running commentary uh, throughout uh, a whole demonstration of a painting from start to finish uh, and I explain everything, I explain the materials I'm using and uh, the process by which we arrive at an a la prima painting. So it would be great to have you. Thanks. So this is the equipment that we're going to be using this morning. Uh, so what we have here is titanium white, cadmium yellow pale hue, permanent rose cobalt blue, uh, burnt amber and ivory black. All of this is in the Windsor and Newton Winton uh, range. Uh, what we have in here is uh, is linseed oil, refined artist's linseed oil, not the yellow stuff that you buy in hardware shops but use for use in varnish and things like that and French polishing. This is uh, an artist grade, it's clear, much clearer. And turpentine, you can either use turpentine, you can use uh, Sansador or something like Zested, which is um, uh, citrus oil. The brushes we're going to use, this one's about an inch, uh, going to just use that for the, the wash. Got a couple of filberts here, so they're not um, they're not like the, the chisel bright brushes. You know, they're, they're called bright, the ones that are very flat across the top. But uh, I've kind of uh, I've been favouring these lately, and because it's such a small painting, I've just got this number one just to put in some details, maybe highlights and things like that. So, okay, so here we go. Let's do this wash first, okay? So we're going to just mix up a very sort of dilute mix of burnt umber. This is my standard go-to wash. It doesn't have to be burnt umber. It can be any color, uh, as long as you don't start using white or black. Uh, they, they just won't work in the painting. Okay, so let's cover this entire canvas. And we do this for a number of reasons, and it's always well worth reiterating them because even I forget why I'm doing it sometimes, is that we're bringing the, the canvas down to the tonal value, you know, the, the actual the shade that the uh, palette is. You know, so that makes it easier for us to judge tone and uh, and colour. Okay, uh, we've broken in the canvas now. We've done something on that uh, canvas, so it's no longer a pristine white uh, thing looking at us, accusing us of not painting. I'm going to wipe it down a little bit so it's not sort of uh, the paint doesn't start sort of being too slick as I as I paint onto it. So I've just taken off the excess. Okay, and now we've got a canvas. Now we've got a canvas ready for painting. Okay, so I'm going to do my drawing. Okay, so this is where, this is where sort of uh, this uh, videoing a class comes into its own because I've noticed it's much easier to show you what's going on with measuring this way than it is to have you live in the studio. I think. So when I measure, I measure the entire thing. The, that, that whole thing has got to fit on that canvas comfortably, not too big so it, it looks uncomfortable or not too small, so it's swimming around. So it's good to get an idea of, of how the whole thing will fit. So you're going to measure from here to here, and from here to here. See, see what I mean there? It's a rectangle, isn't it? All right, so the way we measure that rectangle is we sort of uh, measure uh, like the height, for example, and we do we the, then we sort of check that off against the width. So let's see, I've got the point on the top, so the, the topmost uh, petal of that uh, that marigold, okay. And then I, my finger, I move that down, down, down until it matches the bottom of this. That's the bottommost point of this composition, okay. There. And my arm is straight, my elbow is locked, and I'm 
um, sitting in the position that I'm going to be painting in. Okay, so I'm not moving forward and backward. I, I haven't got a crook in my elbow uh, because that, that mere crook that you've got, you can't control and it'll throw your measurements completely out. Even though they're not empirical measurements, they're not sort of, uh, they're not sort of millimeters, microns. <laughs> you know, it's just say, now I've got the, the height here. Okay, how does it look against the width? So you just turn it round and check the width. Okay, so I've put my finger against the right hand edge of that perfume bottle. You can't see the bloody end of the, 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 um, the brush because despite the wide angle of the lens. Okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to change it. I'm going to do the width first and measure it off against the height. Okay, so now you can see it. So I'm putting the point on the left most part of that composition and that blue bottle, small blue bottle at the bottom, and moving my finger. Or can I move my thumb? Thumb might be easier in this, this circumstance. Okay, so I've moved my thumb there. Look, I've got it there. And you can see my arm wavering around because my arm's starting to get tired now because I've held it out in front of me for so long. But, you know, we're, as I say, we're not talking about millimeters and microns. So now we're going to turn that around, okay, and measure it. See the way my thumb is at the bottom of that bottle there. So what are we missing? We're missing about a third. So I think that width, the width is about two thirds the height. And now I'm, I'm just gonna check this um, from my point of view, which will be different from your point of view in, in, in the lens. I'm just gonna check my measurements. Uh, so just bear with me that you won't be able to see the end of the brush. I'm gonna measure the height, I'm measure the width. Yeah, I think it was about right. It's about two thirds the width of the height. Okay, so that means we can draw a rectangle, can't we? We can say, oh, I want the painting. I don't want it to come up more than this. I don't want the painting to come up further than that. Okay, so what's two thirds of that? It's something like that. And you're always talking about these sort of things like something like, it's something like that. And you say, okay, if I put that there, There's my sort of um, the markers for, for this. Take a bit of the paint off the brush. Okay, so I want my composition to fit into that. Everything should fit into that. I might move that down a bit. No, no, I won't. I'll, I'll just keep that just a touch there. Okay. So I think that uh, everything should fit into that. Everything else will fall um, apart, you know, uh, you know, around you know, the horizon here. I can I can put the horizon in when I put the objects in because I'll know where the horizon is supposed to be. Okay. So where's the middle of this? Let let, let me give myself a, a a center line. Okay. Must be the worst center line in the world, isn't it? But it doesn't have to be sort of. Uh, don't do these things with a ruler. It's not necessary. And it leads you down the path of, of, of trying to recreate a photograph or something. All right, so uh, what's in the center of this? Okay, well, what is in the center? We can sort of try and say, is it the edge of, of, of that uh, little blue wine glass thing? So let's have a look. I'm moving the tip there. I move my finger to the edge of that bottle, to the left, right hand edge of that wine glass, and then I move it over there. It's almost, it's almost there. So it's not there. Is it the actual stem of the, of the wine glass? Is that in the center? No, so it's actually halfway between the stem and the edge of that glass is the center. That seems to be in the center, that, that um, dark part of the, of, of the flower. Not to get too technical, because of what the center of the flower is. Is it the stamen or something like that? Anyway, so now we know that, or we think we know that the, the glass 
comes a bit beyond the center there. Okay. Now, we know that the this bottle comes down here. And that's the edge. We know that. Where's the halfway point top to bottom? Let me move that halfway line up there a little bit. Now, where's the halfway point here? Is it the shoulder of that um, perfume bottle? Certainly could be. Yeah, it kind of is. It's kind of like there. So that bit would be here. And we know that the edge of the, of the bottle comes to here. Okay. And then that is obviously like that. That doesn't come out to the to the center line because we know that the glass does. And that might be the top. I'm measuring that the top of this glass bottle of judging where it is compared to the perfume bottle. Perfume bottle doesn't come to the center line. And the bottom of that uh, uh, glass, the perfume bottle, comes midway through this, through the, the blue bottle on the, on the left. It seems like hard work, right? But, you know, it's good to get these things done, you know, uh, um, get this under your belt accurately, sort of, um, not accurately, but... Uh, a lot of practice of this kind of thing. It'll help you. It'll help you sort of with your with your paintings, no doubt. Okay, so now we've got this glass here coming up there, but it's not the high the, the highest point. The highest point is the flower. And the flower is like that. It's uh, it's almost it's almost just like a square, a rectangle. There. All of this stuff, right? Um, this is oils. So if you get it wrong, all you have to do is is that just wipe it away and and do it again. Painting and drawing is all about making a mark and then correcting it. It's not about getting it right first time. You can correct it at the drawing stage and then you've got a good chance of correcting stuff at the painting stage. As John Singer Sargent said, so, you know, the important uh, part is the drawing. But I mean, he was, uh, he says, if you get your drawing right, then everything else will flow from it. I think that's what, what he said, something like that, paraphrasing it. leaf there stem of the glass there the how do you call it the um the el ellipse of the stand the glass is there there's a shadow coming down here shadow in that fold okay so i'm just marking in what's important to to paint here there's another fold there. In fact, the, the, the horizon is almost at the, uh, at the center line, the, the top bottom center line. Okay. We've got sort of foldy kind of stuff there. We've got a shadow coming up here. You know, that's on the green uh, background. Shadow like that. And there's all sorts of shadows going up there. I'm painting with a, with a kind of a camera right in front of my face. It's only a little camera, but it sure does get in the way. Now, we've got our spot, the stamen or whatever it is in the, in the 
the flower there. Okay. I'm uh, just going to work on this little bottle down here. Your drawings don't have to be sort of um, perfect. You don't have to be finished. You know, that, that kind of way. I think I'm going to put that there. I'm going to sort of exaggerate the way that that, um, how do you say, the, the perspective of that. Of, uh, I'm just kind of marking in things. These are like I'm, I'm sort of writing notes to myself as uh, you know, for the painting later on. Just by putting these marks in. By putting a mark in, it's like writing something down. You remember it more. Okay. There's a kind of a, I don't know what you call it, a little design on that bottle. There. Now, something uh, that we should note, uh, because this is uh, uh, sort of vital at this stage, is to note where the, um, where the brightest bright is and where the darkest dark is. Okay, this is very important because it'll, uh, it'll, make, it'll help you judge every other tone. Everything else comes between those two points, doesn't it? So uh, you've got the brightest point and the darkest point, your scanner on your desktop does that job. Whereas it used to require a scanner operator um, when I was a, a young sort of graphic reproducer printer type. Uh, there was a scanner that cost half a million quid and uh, they had two scanner operators. But their job was to say, to look at a, a, a transparency or a photograph and say, okay, and they say, that's the brightest spot there. That one, that one, Okay, those are the brightest spots. You, they pick one and register that uh, in the scanner computer, and then they could go and they look for the darkest dark. So the darkest dark could be this part here or this part here. It's a bit different for you because the screen quality will never be as good as looking at something in real life. But I can see the, those really dark darks. Yeah, right about there, there, and up there. Yeah. See everything else, even the bright parts uh, on the flower, they're not as bright as the, the bright there. The light is coming from over here. It's coming down just like that. That's the way the light is, is, is falling, okay? And it's casting a shadow here. That's casting a shadow, that's casting a shadow. Okay, that's it, All right? We're going to start with color. And I'm going to start with color. I'm gonna put in some of the darks because the darks will be a, a kind of um, a guide for me, uh, as I said yes in yesterday's video, which is actually up online now um, on YouTube, the, the, the shadows are like the bones of a painting. You hang everything on the shadows. Okay, so you start, that's what they always talk about in um, oil painting, by working from dark to light. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a dark, and I'll show you, I'll show you myself making a dark now. Okay, all right, so I'm going to take some burnt umber and some blue. More blue than burnt umber because it is a kind of a bluish sort of painting, okay? I'm going to make quite a dark dark, all right? That's it. I'm going to go back to the painting. All right, so and let's put in some of those uh, dark areas. It, it's just, uh, you'll see why uh, I think it's like the bones of the painting. It makes everything a bit more definite and easier to work from. Okay. And I'm not using sort of, um, there's, it's, there's a bit of oil in that paint, so it's, it's, not, uh, it's not really, it's not hard to move around. And quite a lot of darks here, there's dark there. And you're not sort of doing some, you know, painting the dark that is actually there. You're just painting in a kind of a dab where you see that dark. Okay, there's another one there. Um, 
Hmm. Do you know what? As I say, I'm correcting my painting. I'm going to make that even further down there. I didn't mark in that uh, shadow, did I? Okay, now we have it there. Okay. Or that one, in fact, which is the... Right. <laughs> Any more? That's dark there. Right now, I'm going to actually sort of paint in some of the some of the blues. Some of these nice. The uh, can you? Yeah, it's not too bad. There's a kind of a uh, a blue here. It's greenish blue on this side. There's reddish blue here. So it's what I call a cold blue there, and a warm blue down that side. Okay, so let's do the coldish blue first. All right, so I'm going to get some blue, some white. And a little bit of yellow into it. Yeah, something like that. And I'll put this in where I see it. Dabs. Up here. Okay, I'm going to make the reddish blue, which is the warmer blue. I'll take some blue, some white, and some red. Sorry, that should have been a bit of oil. Okay. So not too thick, not too much of it. Okay, I'm going to put those uh, areas in that I see. So, for example, here, it might be it might be kind of difficult, as I say, to see the subtleties of something like that on a screen. But you just have to sort of, well, there's nothing to be done for it. We've only got sort of, what, one, two, three, four, five, six blobs of paint. So the actual choosing between your 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 blobs of paint shouldn't be too Difficult if you see what I mean. And that green one, actually. Take it here as well. Okay. Do you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to do, do something with that flower. Right, I'm going to mix up. Um, that marigold colour. I'm going to take some yellow. Take a fair bit of yellow, a bit of red. And that will be my base marigold colour. Now, a lot of it is in shadow, so I'm going to make, make sure I make enough. I'm going to take some ivory black and mix it in with the color that I've already made. It's important that it's not a separate mix. You make the color that the object is, the marigold color, and then you take some of that aside and you make the shadow from that. And I see a lot of people making a color, painting it and then making up a separate shadow color and painting it. And it kind of doesn't work because um, it's obviously, it's the shadow of that color. So you should make it from that color. It's logical. Okay. A bit more red. Okay, so that's kind of a little bit more. 
back a little bit more red. And we're going to paint that in. We are in the um, the blocking in stage of a painting. Okay, so let's put in those shadow parts first. See, I'm not I'm not following petal lines. Bad idea. I can mix a bit more red into that. Okay. Anywhere where I see that shadow. And now I'm going to put in that sort of um, that dark part in the center. I think I'm going to just mix a bit of burnt umber into that into that color. Just put that in. Okay. Let's make that a bit more generous now. Okay. I'm going to put in the the um, background. Background, limey kind of green, but that would be yellow. Blue. More yellow there. A bit of oil, I should say. Oil. Bit more yellow. I might put in a little bit of white, just make it paler rather than rather than too sort of um, acid. It is quite acid. And now I've got to make. I've I've got that. I've got enough. Make more. I'm a devil for not making enough paint, and I keep telling people that they've got to make more paint. Bold. Yeah, something like that. And now I'm going to make, make the shadow because there's all these shadows uh, uh, around as well. So I'm going to take a little bit of ivory black. A little bit of blue. For my shadows. Mm, a bit darker, I think. Okay. Maybe something like that. Bit of oil. Okay. And let's put in those areas that we see. So. That's all shadowed in there. Let's not get too sort of bogged down in, in details on this part. And let's put in the lighter part. There's one bit of um, equipment that I never sort of uh, mentioned. You have to have one of these, a rag with you in your hand at all times during the painting. Very useful thing. Okay, look, we're putting in the the parts in light.
And here's the thing, that paintings don't always have to go up to the edges. In your studies, you can, you can just go up out there like that. Always part, start from your painting and work outwards um, because you never know when you're going to be called away. And at least you'd have a finished painting in the center. Okay, so now we've got, uh, we've got that blocked in. There's some uh, dark, dark leaves. This is, this is um, a good thing to show you because we've got all that, the, the foliage. We've got the foliage uh, uh, underneath the, uh, the flower. So that's a different kind of green. This is, a, this is an unnatural green, really, I suppose. Or it's the kind of green that you'd find in a field of grass in very bright sunshine. It's not a green that you see every day. But the foliage is, uh, is a different green. It's yellow plus blue plus red to make a natural green. And it's quite dark as well and dull. So I'm going to paint, put a bit of black into that. So that was um, yellow plus blue plus red to make it natural plus black to bring down the tone. And that's all you use black for, by the way. You only use it for, uh, uh, for making shadows. In proper al, al prima painting, you don't. There are no lines to be drawn in black. There are only edges in, in tone. So I'm going to put this here. So there's mm, dark in that actually. Put you there. More of that leaf because I want the painting to look well rather than, um, you know, fidelity to, to what's there. You, you, you kind of, you can make things up as well as uh, record. There's a dark in there. And there's that blue in there. It's going to sort of, that reddish blue again. Okay, let's try this bottle here. That's a different green again. That's more of a bluey green, I can see. So let's make up uh, a bluey green. Blue, yellow and white. A bit more yellow. A bit more blue. The oil. Okay, something like that. And then it's going to make a little shadow version of it because there's a shadow here and a couple of other places. A little bit of black, a little bit of extra blue. And put those in first. Oil paint your painting from dark to light. Put it in where you see it. There. And then put in the other, the other colour that you see, blocking in. Okay, take care of that later. I can go over there like that. Now we need to do the foreground, don't we? I do beg your pardon. I filled this in from uh, 
and the colour that you just saw me make. And then I left you sort of looking at the palette. You know. So I just filled that in, I put the shadows in first, there, there, and there, and then I filled in the rest of it. Okay. And now I'm going to do the foreground. The foreground is going to put in as a general uh, blue mix, so blue and white, and a little touch of yellow, just a little touch of yellow. And then I'm going to make the shadow from it with a little bit of black. Here, okay. So that's white, blue, and a little touch of yellow, because there's a yellow light uh, above us. And I'm going to make this, I'm going to make the shadow from that with a little bit of extra blue and black. In. Shadow here. Shadow comes around there like that. That's all kind of in shadow there. Shadow here. Okay, put that shadow, shadow coming there. The stripes and everything, we, we'll hint at them. <clears throat> I don't think we'll, um, we'll get as far as, as adding the stripes, and I don't even think it's particularly necessary. We'll just hint at them, though. <clears throat> Do excuse me, let's take a drink of water. <clears throat> right. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to that. Okay, here we go. Just filling those areas that we see. So even down there, we're painting through the glass, aren't we? So down there. And at this point, because we're painting around objects we've already painted, we can start sculpting them. See what I mean by sculpting? We can bring that up there like that. This is still a blocking in, so this is why we're not getting down into into details, and we just want to get the generalities in. Oil paints is a very forgiving light pan because it allows you to to paint and get it wrong and and then correct it. dark up there as well. Okay. Now we're going to do the the little cap, which is glass actually, glass and a little bit of gold. The gold is going to put a bit of dark there. What else have we got around us? We've got a dark green there. Around here is reflecting um, something made of wood, probably the back of my palette. So that's a kind of a, or it could be, in fact, it probably is 
take a refracting light from over here and put that in. I'm not going to describe it exactly, but there's the, um, the points behind it. The, um, sorry, the, the um, background. And then there's a kind of a bluish green light there. Okay, and then more, another sort of reflection of the marigold there. Okay, we're not gonna to get too descriptive of that because it's uh, not necessary. Okay. Um, there's a yellowy green. Actually, there's a bit of uh, the marigold in it. It's quite warm here. Okay. Now, uh, we're almost finished with the with the um, the blocking in part. Just need to sort of uh, work on these areas here. And down here, there's a slightly purplish color there. Or I would say violet, really, I suppose. And it's a bit violet here. And then at the top it, here, the shoulder, this is reflecting that. Reflecting the, um, the background. So I'm going to put that in there as a kind of a reflection of the background there. It's green. And a little bit here. Purplish there as well. Violet, I should say, I should just keep saying purple. Violet around here. So what we're doing uh, now is we've kind of more or less finished our, um, our blocking in stage and we're putting in subtleties we're putting in uh, uh, subtleties, subtleties at this stage. And we're building up, it's a mosaic. That's the, the best description of, of what's going on here. So think of it as you're putting down blocks rather than you're brushing stuff on. The nicest paintings, I think, are the ones that are built up of obvious brush strokes. Because we don't have to, uh, we don't have to be um, the world's photographers anymore, do we? The, the impressionists saw that. They said, well, we've got photographers now, so we can't compete with photographers. And, and painting took off like a, like a rocket then became much more interesting. You just adjust things where you see them. See little darks, you put them in. If you, this is what they say, mean when uh, they say, paint what you see, not what you know. You think you know what an apple looks like until you try to paint one. And, uh, and then realize that you don't bloody remember what it looks like at all, only in the most sort of childish sense that you can sort of draw this apple thing that you've been doing since you were able to hold a pen. But it requires observation. So I'm putting in little sort of um, darks and uh, varying hues where I see them. So for example, here, there's a nice dark there, that dark comes up there, that dark goes there and across. I'm just going to sort of um, 
halt for a second, right? Are, are you getting it so far? Yeah, yeah, great. Okay, my explanations are, are, are okay. Yeah, one question. Um, yes. The gold on the top of the perfume bottle. Yes. Is there such a colour as gold? No. No, so you just... It's, it's just a, co a collection of reflections. Reflections, and, okay. And some of it is kind of um, ochre coloured. Some of it yeah. is, uh, is reddish. And some of it is very dark. And then there are highlights. Okay. It's an okay. interesting thing to try and paint, but you never paint gold. You yes. just paint whatever it's reflecting. And then okay. some yellows. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, any other questions? What just at this kind of halfway point? Like Kevin, between paints, you you, you put your paintbrush into the turps every time and and rub rub it in the rag, is it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right, so well, I mean, if you're going to go from blue to yeah, red, of course, you really will need a, a clean brush. And I'm a kind of a painter that sort of tries to get away with one brush throughout the painting. It's not not always possible, but I try to use as few brushes as possible. So the rag is is really the most important, well, not the most important, it's very important uh, to have. Uh, you can't kind of do without it. And you know palettes, you, got, you get a palette and there's a kind of a cutaway. Yeah. Yeah, well that is so that you can put, stick your thumb through and hold brushes and a rag. You often see oh, yeah. paintings of people that got a rag hanging from their, their hand on the palette. Yeah. Obviously today, I'm using a palette that's on my desk in front of me. You know, you just adapt, don't you? Yeah. We don't have to be Rembrandt, you know, we could wear a big floppy hat. And, uh, like that. Can I ask a question? Please do, Kate. Um, <clears throat> say with acrylics, yes. um, to stop it drying out before the painting's finished on your palette, what yeah. can you use apart from water? No, there is an extender. There's, there's something called an extender gear, but I found that when I used the, the extender, the, the acrylic paint went kind of slimy. Oh, right. No longer buttery like, it, like you want it to be. Um, there was a, I read a book about a forger, an English forger, I can't remember his name, and uh, he was putting all sorts of things in the paint, and he kind of, <laughs> he kind of recommended uh, KY jelly. Oh. <laughs> you could try it. <laughs> Just put a little bit of KY jelly into the paint, see, see what, it, what it does. But you can't put too much in, you see, anyway, because you're, 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 you're diminishing the pigment load, aren't you? You're, so the more you of something either it's water or it's turps or it's um an extender of some variety you're, you're actually diminishing the pigment load yeah okay or you could use um who is it uh, golden do a, a an acrylic paint called open acrylics and they're long lasting acrylic paints okay. and they do work like yeah. that are you sort of uh, are you sort of allergic to oils or some of the chemicals okay no i just i'm just got uh, i'm di currently doing acrylics i quite like acrylics actually yeah yeah, yeah they're lovely they yeah apply quite quickly on the polish just yeah i was thinking of doing a kind of an acrylic sort of online class but half the time you just be listening to a hairdryer mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> you know, so um anyway look uh, uh, let, let's go, go on uh, uh, ahead so uh now I'm going to put in a little bit of uh, uh, blue across there as well, because I, I want to, my highlights to show. So let's do some work on, let's do some work on that glass here. It's darker down there, but there are also some reflective, there's some reflective light coming up here, which is also slightly, um, how do you call it, uh, uh, violet. So here, underneath. That's light being reflected from underneath. Okay. There's some lighter, brighter blues. A reddish. Here. And you shouldn't get too specific here because uh, The Dabby painting here is worth everything. There's a, a nice violet running down the side of the glass here. 
Okay, so it's just a collection of um, of dabs of varying hues. Okay, now that green is being reflected down into the stem of that glass. I'm putting that there. You can see that, so it's going in. There's a dark, kind of a dark blue of the stem or the the, the platform. I don't know what they call it. That bit there. Okay, that'll give us an indication that there's a handle there. Let's go back to the green perfume um, bottle and do some work on it. There's a dark, me, you know, dark medium dark there. There's a, a leaf green here. And then the... Um, there are some sort of nice refractions going on in the in the bottle here. You just sort of indications that you see them, and they're kind of undulating, aren't they? There's a kind of a there's a, obviously a kind of turns in the in the in the glass. There's a. Going on there. There's no need to be too sort of specific with uh, any of this stuff. Little thing there. There's a. Uh, it's reflecting the the marigolds. Look, I can just see one there. You might not be able to see that. It's a bit too subtle uh, for the for a camera to pick it up. Okay. There's a uh, an orangey. Reflection coming down here, that might be from the marigolds too. Okay. There's some nice sort of light colours come down here in this green bottle here, blue bottle here, so reason they're running the selfie. There's another one around here. There's something sort of warm here. There's a lightish blue running around the rim. Here. <clears throat> and this is Al Prima oil painting. Okay, so we're that the whole point is that you bounce around from uh, different parts of your painting, adding in things as you see them, not working on one little point and then moving on. I often see people doing uh, things like that. that um, it makes very stilted looking paintings. You bounce around all over the place trying to get the, uh, the mosaic pieces into place. Okay. We've got some there. Let's, um, let's do a little bit on that flower. I'm sure you've been aching to have that flower done. Just gonna put in some strokes here. Let's put in some brights, the bright part. They don't have to follow the, the line of the, of the actual flower petals themselves. There's a bit of oil in there, so I can see right there. Right there. Mm. 
white got onto my brush. Don't want white in it yet. Now there's a kind of a, a light, slightly greenish part coming in through there like that. Okay. Right, let's go to our, our green that we made for the background. To make a bit more of it now. <clears throat> okay. And let's make the, the flower, the petals. That's how you make petals. You don't um, you don't paint petals, you sculpt petals. Bring in the background. And even here. And there's some stuff. Okay, now I'm going to add it just to see what that the um. Marigold color looks like just a touch of white here. I don't want to really get it's just suggestions. Okay, let us bring our. Sculpting again. Okay. Let's suggest the stripes. So there's some sort of dark. We're only going to suggest now, so it's, don't get excited. Yeah. Go around the whole thing, sort of making. Dark one in there.
you want to put in enough information for, for people to say, oh, it's a stripy club. You don't want to get bogged down in um, in those kind of details. Because we'd be here all night. Fill in a couple of those um, things. We're really missing a bit of paint there. Let's do some more with the, the green background, just with, with the shadows. So that could go a little bit darker in there. It goes a bit darker and redder there. Interesting. Okay. See, that, that's how much leeway that um, oils affords you. You can sort of go back in. As long as you're not making radical changes, you're, you've got plenty of sort of room for, for change. Fill it up. Okay, let's work a bit more on um, are in there. Now, we want to just tidy up a few things. We want to tidy up the edge of that bottle there. And you can leave, there's some nice things here that you can't really see, but they're sort of um, raised parts of the of, you know, texture on the, and the bottle and things like that. Texture is really nice to have in a painting. You can see enough of it. You don't flatten out your 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 painting, I suppose, in other words. Let us do. Uh, there's a few sort of um, nice subtleties now. I'm just going to try and put them in on the same brush. There's a there's a nice light coming down there. Across there. Put that in there. A mosaic, building it up. The strokes are getting smaller and smaller. It's like building a house. And uh, I've probably said this before, I'm going on ad nauseum, but it's, uh, it's true, is that when you're building a house you know, from scratch, and you know, in two weeks, you've, you've gone up to roof level. And you think, bloody hell, they said it was going to be sort of uh, three months and, and it's up in, in, in two weeks. It's, we're, we're going to be living in it soon. And then bloody hell, it slows down as everything sort of, <laughs> all the details start coming in. And, uh, and that, that's what a painting is like. You know, it, it starts off, you think, oh, it's really coming together quickly. And, and then you start seeing the things that you've missed out and um, start putting them in. And, and really sort of, you've got to stop yourself uh, at some stage. Just let it be a, a, a painting or study or, or, or whatever. Just putting in sort of some indications again that there's, we've got a striped cloth in front of us. Yeah. 
Um, what else? There's a there's a dark up there. Now let's sort of have a look at hyperlights. There's a lot of there's a there's a there's a lovely sort of uh, bright violet across the top of that little blue bottle. And put that in just there like that and I can see can I see any more there are more bluer ones there's some blue ones that I need to put in blue one here blue one there blue because they're probably coming from um, cold lights one here and you don't need to be absolutely specific. Put them in where you, where you think you see them. One there across the top of the glass. There is a lighter light coming down there. Um, down here. And painting is, is a lot of it's like it's about simplification. Just don't get too bogged down in detail. I was a bit bright. Should have been concentrating while I was talking. Yeah. An indication that the bottle's got some undulations in it. Again, just bolstering that uh, thought. Um, there's a beautiful, very bright, pure blue. I'm not sure if even paint can express it because um, paint, uh, you're coping with the, uh, the shortcomings of the paint. So you're coping with problems, not solving them usually. It's good to have that um, sort of idea in your head. In there. No, it isn't. It doesn't do that. The blue that I can see justice, but there's nothing for it. It has to, has to go. It has to be in. Okay, and now some warm highlights. And I'm going to make. I'll show you how to make the warm highlights. That's a good one to do. So clean brush. We don't want dirty paint for the highlights. Okay, and I'm going to take a little bit of white pure white, a tiny touch of yellow, and an even smaller touch of red. I'm not sure I even took some up on that. Yeah, tiny, tiny, tiny. More white because it's going to be bright. Okay, and I want the paint proud of the brush. There's more paint on than the brush can sort of hold okay because I'm just going to leave the paint onto the areas where I need it okay right so highlights I you see I can see little like two little points of light but I'm not going to find it in there's two little points of light there's a, a dab there there's a there's one here dab one across the top Dab. One on the shoulder of this bottle. Okay. Put dab there. Okay. I'm going to um, close up that. Make make that even sort of. Thinner. Uh, I'm going to lose that line there and lose it here. Okay, and then I suppose I could uh, just give an indication at the back. That there are little patterns in the um, in the cloth, in the background cloth. 
So it's going to put in some ones that are in the shadow. It's going to just kind of sort of give indications that they're there. I'm not going to paint little sort of flowers. And then as they get into the light, they're much brighter. It's still not as bright as those highlights. Just an indication, and there are little yellow spots in the middle of each of those. bits of, of, of work on those leaves. Just just variation, that's all. And since we started, the whole thing has kind of drooped a bit. Anything else needs a, a little bit of a bolster? Maybe in here. Just play with that a little bit. There is a little bit of highlight that I missed across here. Little dark there that I missed across the shoulder there. That'll give it a bit of um, definition. no point in going on far beyond that you could spend all day tightening it and tightening it and tightening it but when paintings are, are tightened too much they tend to uh, lose power uh, and anyway it's a study isn't it so and this is the kind of thing that uh, you should do maybe once a day try and paint you no know, once a day so it's going to leave that there for a moment I'm going to fix that did see the spot there in the middle because it, it just needs to um, I neglected to do it while you're watching so let's have a look 
and see if it's going to focus on that. You can see that there's quite a lot of you know, texture in a lot of these paintings. Okay. Well. Really, really good. Just, looks lovely. See, as you go along, you will want to paint something that you want to paint. I hope that would be the, the, the ideal. And this will, all this kind of still life stuff will provide a foundation for it. Uh, because you can't sort of, you can't paint what's in your imagination without having the skills to do it uh, and that's why this is so important and it's up to you whether you just spend the rest of your life painting apples and flowers or, or whatever or painting vast important paintings or even small important paintings uh, you know that describe your life and the human condition and everything but uh, I don't think you can do it without doing this kind of stuff but you have to be forgiving of yourself and allow things to be wrong I hope you enjoyed that uh, demonstration of alla prima painting. I hope you got a lot of information out of it. I'll try to explain uh, what I'm doing as much as I can. Uh, what would be very helpful, and you could aid me in uh, just getting myself known and giving information and value to as many people as possible by commenting on this video or liking it, or better still, even sharing it. So I'd be very grateful. Thank you very much, and I'll see you the next time.